Cosby Show. Harold's going to tell you how to talk to policemen. Bill blows up his campfire, and I'm going to make a cabin cruiser out of pop bottles. <laughs> and here's a man who spends his whole life outside. Outside the house. Outside the norm. Outside the acceptable rules of behavior. That, that much I know for sure. Anyway, here he is. Mr. Outside. Red. Thank you. Uh, of course, I wouldn't have to be outside being Mr. Outside if Mr. Inside wasn't here inside. How are you tonight there, Mr. Inside? I'm just peachy, oh, so peachy. <laughs> Quite a few pits in the peach, I see. <laughs> well, been an interesting week up at the lodge this week. Uh, old man Sedgwick really ticked off with Moose Thompson because Moose had wrecked his tool shed, but Moose said, hey, look, the roof must have been sagging down pretty low for me to be able to drive my car right up on top of it like that. <laughs> you know, actually, I saw Moose's car up there, you know. Yeah. I, I thought it was a weather vane. You know, with the doors open, kind of showing the wind direction and all that. <laughs> Well, I mean, we had to figure out how to get it down there. It got real heavy and all. So what we did was we rolled up all the windows and then sealed them off with the bathtub caulking. And then we filled her with hydrogen. And, uh, of course, this made it light enough, you know, the two guys could carry it. So Moose and Buster were carrying the car up the driveway. And uh, Moose was so excited, he lit up a cigar. And by golly, you know, hydrogen burns real well. And uh, when the smoke cleared, of course, the car was gone. Stolen? <laughs> Don't think so. But we didn't know where it was either, to tell you the truth, you know, until we looked up. And there it was, way up in the sky with Moose still hanging on to the back bumper. <laughs> and she's dropping at 32 feet per second per second right down into the middle of Possum Lake. Whoa! <laughs> wait a second, whoa, wait a sec. That rusty old car's gonna pollute the lake. So will Moose, actually. <laughs> no, uh, Errol, I told you, we had sealed up all, all the holes in the car, so it just floated like a fishing bobber. And, and so did Moose. Uh, of course, his holes were sealed up from fear. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the car, the car looked real interesting because it was, it, was it was upside down, you know, and it was fascinating with the, the wheels still spinning and the tires smoldering. And then a, a seagull went over and dropped a treat through the hole in his muffler. And, uh, we got the idea to have a, have our own regatta. A regatta? A regatta. Oh, that's, well, a regatta, that's like when all the boats go by, right? And, and then yeah. people all stand there in their white suits and they salute, you know, from the poop deck. <laughs> yeah, well, we had the poop deck covered, you know. <laughs> This is a love song, more or less, for my wife. She's the best thing, or one of the better things, anyway, that's happened to me in my life. <clears throat> I'd say what I am, I am because of her. <clears throat> but uh, she wouldn't take that as a compliment. <laughs> I find her to be perfect, or uh, pretty close in, in a lot of ways. But uh, she could back off on the criticism. That wouldn't hurt at all. Happy anniversary, Bernice. <laughs> this week on uh, Handyman Corner, we're going to show you some ways of recycling the old uh, plastic uh, pop bottles. Now, I know they recycle these into new plastic bottles, but that's got to be expensive when you figure they got to haul them away in a truck of some kind and then melt them down and rinse all the spit out of them and so on. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, why can't we come up with a better idea that can use the pop bottles where is, as is? For example, uh, why don't you just take a bunch of them and uh, glue them all over your car? Down the door panels, the fenders, the bumpers, up over the roof, not over the windows. There's a safety tip there. And then once you got them glued on, uh, fill them all up with sand. And what you have is your very own portable, shock-absorbing crash barrier. <laughs> Mind you, they're, a little, they're about the weight of a, a real good, ripe watermelon, so that's going to cut into your gas mileage. But you got to say to yourself, Hey, what is my life worth? And if the answer is more than two bucks a gallon, go for it. <laughs> Any more ideas? Well, I would think so. What about just cutting the bottom off uh, one of these bottles? The various things you can do with that. You got a lovely uh, soup bowl or uh, 
to my mind, call me crazy, but if that's not an attractive plant holder, then uh, I'm missing the point of life. <laughs> or, uh, you know, a half a halter top, I suppose. <laughs> or this is, I think this is a darn good little unit here. Uh, you did glue, glue a little uh, rim brim on the end there, and you got yourself a little baseball cap that's the same color as your hair. <laughs> need a bit of a pea head for that, but uh, just leave her in the sauna for an extra hour or two. Uh, one of the interesting properties of these bottles is that they are really built to uh, hold liquid in, which means that they will also work real well for holding liquid out. So tighten the top up real good on that and uh, cram one of these into each of the corners of one of these uh, pop cases. And then what you do is you drag that up your arm and adjust that to be the size of the weight and flabbiness of whatever your uh, triceps are. And then once you get them up here, you flip them up on top and they'll just sit up there and what you have is an incredible pair of uh, water wings. <laughs> and they're extra safe because it's eight completely separate uh, flotation units. So even when the kids are shooting BBs at you, you're probably going to be able to make it to shore. <laughs> and of course, once you've learned how to swim, uh, you can just fill them with iced tea and cross the English Channel. <laughs> or uh, what you can do is just uh, take the one the big two liter size and put that inside your bathing trunks. And that'll give you uh, as much flotation as you'll ever need and probably more attention than you'll ever want. Uh, if you have a whole bunch of these cases now, you could uh, strap them all together and make yourself a raft or a, a floating dock or a, even a great big plastic island. It'd be a real, real eye catcher for the cottagers looking out the window, see that floating by during one of the heavier storms. But uh, if you're the kind of guy who's, uh, who's like me, who uh, has a whole lot of bottles and has a whole lot of time and uh, doesn't have the kind of job where he cares what people think. Uh, I've got just a project for you. A pop bottle boat. <laughs> Yo, ho, ho, and a bottle of Diet Pop. When your friends see in a cabin cruiser like this, they can only call you one thing, Popeye. <laughs> Mind you, they may have a few other suggestions. And uh, there's something else. If you do build one of these of your very own, uh, you got to expect to be pulled over a few times by the Marine police. Because they'll figure you went through a fair whack of booze to use up this much mix. You know, and, and some people just can't help uh, looking at a boat like this and, and just assuming that uh, alcohol was involved uh, in some way. Uh, now, as a bit of a safety precaution, when you go to pick your engine size, uh, I would not recommend that you put the inboard engine in this. Uh, certainly not a V8, or not even the big six. It's very difficult, to, to my mind, to safely attach a 700-pound uh, engine to uh, a polyethylene uh, pop bottle. But uh, that's, just, that's just my opinion. You do whatever you want. Uh, I would suggest that you uh, power up with your favorite carbonated beverage. You just uh, shake her up, put your thumb over the end, shoot her out the back, and you got yourself a jet boat. And when the cruise is all done, you got enough bottles left to make yourself a flying bridge. <laughs> now, next week, uh, we're going to show you how to make a boat trailer out of pop cans. But until then, remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Time to me to cast off. <laughs> and now is part of the show where we expose the three words men have such a hard time saying, I don't know. <laughs> And here to prove the point on the expert section of the show, of course, is my Uncle Ned and his good friend, Mr. Hap Shaughnessy. <laughs> Letter number one. Dear experts, last week my husband decided to save money by doing some car repairs himself. When he was done, our car was ruined. <laughs> After they towed our 64 Valiant off to the junkyard, I found this, I found this lying in our driveway. Can you tell me what it is? Wow, sure. That's a distributor cap, obviously. Hey, everybody knows that, don't they, Harold? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a distributor cap right there. That's what that is, obviously. <laughs> distributor cap, if only red. Lady, this is a prototype for a top-secret weapon developed by the Pentagon during the Nixon years called Robo... Octo... Used, used to be written on here. <laughs> Robo... Octopus... Magneto... Torpedo. 
Well, I knew it wasn't a regular disrupticator cap. That's a deadly weapon. Oh. In the water, all six arms fly out, so it looks like an octopus, and all six highly explosive charges magnetically attach themselves to the hull of the enemy submarine and explode. <laughs> Breaching the hull and uh, sinking the sub. That's a robo-octo pus. Pus. Magnetol. <laughs> oh, yeah? Uh, well, how come the robo-octopus thing says Valiant? That's <laughs> uh, just a code name, Valiant. <laughs> what about the, uh, what about the spark plug, or sorry, what about the explosive charges? <laughs> AC Delco. AC? AC. Anti submarine charge. And, uh, Delco, uh, any, any fiber roll. Uh, Delco, uh, short for delivery container. <laughs> Anti submarine charge delivery container. <laughs> anyway, they didn't end up using it. The Pentagon uh, doubted that it would work. Yeah, doubt is a powerful thing, isn't it? <laughs> It is spring, when a young man's fancy turns to thoughts of love. Or feeling that, lust. Or feeling that, WrestleMania 8. <laughs> Glenn? Glenn, you in there? The marina's open. Just take whatever you need. Everything's a hundred bucks. I'm not glad it's me. I just need to borrow some rope. All oh, right. Uh, just help yourself. I just leave a hundred bucks on the counter. <laughs> What are you doing to the RV now, Glenn? Well, I gotta put one of these gizmos on her. Another toy, huh? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's amazing to me how you find the time to do all the work on the RV and then, you know, run the business and everything. Run a business? Well, yeah, the marina. Oh, the, oh, the marina, sure. sure. <laughs> the marina. You know what this is, right? No. This here's a motion detector video assist parking unit. Wow. Yeah. When I have to back in a real tight spot. Oh, sure, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. this thing help me out. You know, like, uh, the edge of the Grand Canyon. Oh, yeah. You know, or going through the giant redwoods in California. Yeah. You know, or the beer store. <laughs> oh, yeah. Boy, you, you have spent a couple of dollars on her, haven't you? Oh, yeah. $7,000, Rich. Wow. That's just for this thing. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yep. $20,000, I figure, overall. Oh, my but, gosh. But, you know, it's worth it. Uh-huh. This thing, was, I only paid 500 bucks for it, and it was a mess when I got it. No kidding. Well, anyway, uh, Glenn, I just uh, needed the rope because uh, we're going to tie all the boats together for the regatta, you know. Oh, no, you don't want to do that, right? No, no, I got a whole bunch of outboard motors lying around. Why don't you just uh, stick them all in the back? I'll rent them to you for 100 bucks. <laughs> well, uh, okay, Glenn, tell you what, tell you what. You throw a half dozen uh, outboards into the back of the van, and I'll take them over to the lodge, and we'll just, you know, see who wants what. Uh, well, I, you know, Red, I'm real busy with this video assist thing. It's going to take me a little while, so you just help yourself. No, no, that's okay. I can wait. Well, I never put one on, Red, so it might take a couple hours. You take your time, Glenn. <laughs> you, sir, are the laziest man alive. Well, Glenn, coming from you, that has to be a compliment. <laughs> Well, our Gonzo Regatta has got everybody going, and the idea that you can put a motor on your vessel has got everybody pretty excited. Moose has decided to turn his car into a paddle wheeler. You know, Uncle Red, I saw Buster Hatfield walking down there, and he had, like, a really long extension cord, you know? I was just hoping he's not going to build a boat with an electric motor, is he? Well, actually, Buster, uh, uh, I believe, is building a boat out of 35 uh, used mailboxes. Oh, I know. Where's he getting those? Well, let's just say that uh, nobody around Possum Lake's going to be getting any bills for a while. <laughs> and he's going to power the unit with uh, one of them uh, wet, dry, vacuum, shop vac type things, which is going to suck water in the bow and blow it out the stern. Very reminiscent of my great-grandfather on my mother's side. I don't know why you're always changing things. You're forever changing things, you guys. Just leave things the way they are. You're always so creative. <laughs> You got any uh, moving parts in that gizmo there, Harold? No, I don't. Little rubber belt. No, I don't that? have any. What's that? Don't, Uncle Red, don't. I, don't. I don't, don't look have at any. Harold. Harold. I want to just look at it. I want to look at Don't, don't. I have a cold, and I'm just going to give it to you. I don't even care. <laughs> hey, 
Oh. Wear a smile all the while, and all your friends will name you. But wear a frown when there's a bad smell around, or all your friends will blame you. <laughs> well, I wasn't really in, a, in much of a mood for adventure with Bill, but he said there was lunch in it for me, so... And it went not only just lunch. Yeah, yeah, hi, Bill. But a big, juicy steak, and I want to buy... Ah, ah, ooh. I hate that sound. It reminds me of grade three, both years. <laughs> anyway, uh, Bill brought his own secret steak sauce, and he's going to put that on this. Oh, Obviously, a couple of holes in the side of the jar there, Bill. You know? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I think I'll skip the hot wax. And we're going to... Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> now what we're going to do is we're going to build ourselves a little campfire and uh, cook the steak. It was a good-looking piece of meat. He's going to... What do you got there? Oh, maybe what? Cut the steak sauce. And he's putting the... Oh, watch. Bell, bell, bell. A little uh, garnish on the steak there. And he cleared a little spot. And now what he wants to do is uh, put a bunch of rocks around. You know, it kind of contains the fire. So uh, I've got a few rocks there, and I'm pitching in there. You know, there aren't a lot of rocks uh, around this part of the lodge, because uh, Bill's done this before, mainly. So uh, well, there's one there. Yeah, well, that's kind of a big one, Bill. Watch where you're throwing. Watch Bill. Watch for Bill. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Bill. So he goes down, uh, down by the, the creek there. So there's a lot of rocks down there. You know, I heard a story one time that you should never use uh, oh. Bill for anything, but you should never use uh, rocks from uh, out of the water because they got the water still in them. Anyway, don't worry about that. And so we, you know, innovation, innovation. We're going to cook the steak over the over the rake. <laughs> now, the Bill, Bill, that thing's got holes all around the sides of it there. What? Oh, all right, all right, all right. Going to wrap. Okay, wrap the towel around. All right, maybe that'll work. <laughs> No, apparently not. No, no, there was a hole in the end there, Bill. Yeah, 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 well, I'll get that sauce onto the steak anyway. <laughs> what do you got? My gosh, you don't see that every day of the week, thank goodness. So we're going to cook up this. Now the river rock is starting to, well, I didn't even notice that. It's starting to hum and sizzle, and I put the steak over, and it's starting to rock. And apparently, when these things build up enough pressure inside, No, I don't, I don't remember much of what happened after that. Uh, I remember I kind of came to in the barn, and uh, I came up and I thought to myself, where is that weenie? <laughs> there he is. And now here's a new idea for all you young kids who are forced to watch this stuff. Hey, it's me, heavy hip-hop Harold, with my brand new show, Rapping with the Man. <laughs> rapping with the man. <laughs> okay, I know there's not supposed to be a W in front of rapping, okay? Because uh, I'm going to fix that by next week. I don't want you to think this is a show about rapping gifts with some guy. Because it's not. <laughs> it's a show about talking to uh, policemen. But I didn't want to call it that because obviously very uncool. Like when the policemen go undercover, we still know it's policemen. We know it's them. You want to know how to tell? Okay, I'll tell you, because I know. They got, like, these great big, long black shoes, right? And they got short hair, neatly trimmed mustaches, and really good posture. <laughs> yeah, these are all things that I think most street gangs are lacking. <laughs> okay, so the show is going to be called, then, um, Rapping with Policemen. Or police women, you know. Okay, or police women. I'm going to have to change that, too. Okay, so by next week, it's going to be called um, Rapping with People of Authority. Yeah, People of Authority. That's what it's going to be called. Rapping with People of Authority. Okay. Okay, so, Harold. No one's out of the shower now. Needs his uniform back. No, 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 no. Pardon me, Harold? Uh, nothing. Sorry. <laughs> Road. I don't know how much longer I can go on doing a show without a budget. <laughs> Possum Lake Regatta there, Bob? What? No, no, Red. I happen to be doing some work for the Department of Natural Resources. Oh, yeah? Yes, I'm... I happen to be measuring the gravity of this specific marsh. <laughs> the wetlands are an important part of the ecological chain. I don't know if you knew that, Red. Well, I guess you're done for the day now that you've drowned your instruments. Well, I have another set of clubs. Tools. 
Well, uh, what can I do for you, Red? Remember now, I've got 36 holes of work ahead of me. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, uh, actually, Bob, I just wanted to know if maybe you guys down in the department wanted to build a boat for the regatta. I thought you could make one out of, say, pencils and coffee cups and those tax forms you're sending me every couple of months. <laughs> no, thanks, Red. No time. Every minute is precious when you work for the civil service. It's like a well-oiled machine. <laughs> really? Most of the guys I meet are down a court, or their palms are greased. <laughs> Hang on to this for me, will you, Red? Well, Bob, you're not going to be able to putt from the top of the tree there. What do you hand me this for? Because that is my favorite club. <laughs> Bob! Bob! Oh! <laughs> well, we've had a major rethink on the Possum Lake Regatta because uh, mass arrests uh, tend to dampen the fun of almost any social event. <laughs> well, I am one person who's personally glad that you decided to cancel. Smart move. Oh. We're not canceling, Harold. We're just, we're just gonna make the boats not powered, okay? We've tied them all to Moose's car. We're gonna take turns rowing. How do you roll a car? The car is upside down, Harold. You just weld oar locks to the rocker panels. <laughs> Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, this way, if we get stopped by the Marine police, at least uh, Moose's boat is licensed. Heck, it's got plates. <laughs> and uh, they got, they've made an arrangement with some guy at the end of the regatta is going to buy all the stuff uh, for scrap iron, and Moose will get enough money, he can get himself a couple of used K-cars. <laughs> what, like one to drive and one for a boat? No, uh, one to drive and one to give to old man Cedric as a tool shed. <laughs> It's a cry of the possum. That's meeting time. All right, Harold, you go on ahead. I'll be right down. All right. Well, that's about it for our show. But if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting. And uh, I found something out. That uh, combination washer-dryer that your parents gave us does not float. All right? <laughs> so I would say it's probably not as top of the line as they pretended it was. All right? <laughs> And for the rest of you, on behalf of myself and uh, Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, thanks for watching and keep your stick on the ice. Mr. Hadfield is selling his snowmobile for 25 bucks. You can pay him tonight and pick it up tomorrow. Be sure to bring scuba equipment. Oh. <laughs>